titi kuroku shata tara soto to 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 mana ni 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 karaka shata ra mona sata ta 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 mona nana father god right now in the name of jesus i pray father god i pray that whatever comes out of my mouth is actually something that you're saying father ora city allow me to maintain the focus on you only father god no matter what i'm facing thank you jesus well i'm out here at the park uh, you know um i don't know if you guys been following my story but um on august 11 my car was totaled I was ha- I was actually okay, you know, I was working. I was trying my best, you know, um to overcome all my childhood trauma, you know, and uh, and I just kept going and 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 I never really stopped to get a hold of my mental health and you know my physical limitations and i just kept pushing myself no matter what i went through because i always believe that you know in order to get through life you have to work 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 because that's what was instilled in me as i was a little girl growing up you know that's what my mom told me to do and you know and, you know and unfortunately she didn't know better either you know she has her own story and i'm not gonna you know um bad mouth my mom or anything either you know cuz you know she did the best she could you know everybody does the best they can right under the circumstances they have but anyway so um i try to i've been trying to stay away from social media and kind of away from people because i realized that you know ever since i filed for divorce all this you know i'm also going through a divorce um all this uh feelings and emotions just that were bundled up kind of like came out and you know and i've been dealing with those emotions and you know i just didn't realize you know that the way you grow up really impacts how you um turn out as an adult So I I've re- recognized that I had been living in survival mode and survival mode is when you pretty much just do whatever you can to survive and you don't even care about yourself you know and you just work 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 and you just survive you know and that's not healthy so I'm learning to discern better you know and and try to stay positive even though it's hard sometimes it's very hard I'm not going to lie you know every morning I wake up you know with the spirit of heaviness with you know with loneliness with the feeling of oh you're going to be depressed today or you're going to be sad today or your body hurts you should stay in bed you know and you know but you know the spirit of the living god tells me no iris you need to push yourself you need to keep going you know you need to even though you're tired or whatever you're feeling you know push through it for you you know and today i was You know, I've been going through a lot of stuff too, you know, in my love life. You know, another thing I recognized that I didn't know how to handle because no one really taught me the proper way of doing things. You know, um I grew up jumping from one relationship to another and I had never really taken the time to be by myself until now and it's actually a really nice experience to be able to be within yourself and you know, not depend on anyone, you know, just the Lord, of course, you know. You always got to depend on God. That's one thing too. You know, if you feel like you don't you don't need God, then you're being prideful. You know, um but today in the morning, you know, I was you know, I I, I was I woke up and you know, I was I was sitting in my little porch and or you know, my little area and you know, I was talking to God, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm tired, this and that. I'm always doing this and always doing that, blah blah, whatever, you know. You know, and then God said, you well, you know, he said, um you always go the extra mile and you're willing to push yourself for everyone else. You know what about you? What about for me? What about for God? What are you willing to do for God? And that's when my little light bulb went up and I'm like, what the nef? 
You're right. I'll die for God right now. All right, let's do this, Father. What do you want to do, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to listen to my feelings. I'm going to listen to what the Word of God says, you know, and that even though I know it, it's dark right now and, you know, like I said, in August 11, my car got totaled. Then following that, you know, first it started with filing for divorce. You know, I, I realized that, you know, all these emotions and feelings started coming out and I started getting sad and anxiety started kicking in. And at the same time, I was dealing, trying to be friends with someone who's always negative. You know, someone that I ended up falling in love with too. And, you know, and I really do care for him, but every time I'm around him, it's like I get brought down because you know, he doesn't push himself and he doesn't motivate himself. And I'm tired of being the one motivating everyone at this point. You know, I don't mind doing it, but right now I'm tired. You know, I will I will talk to him later. But for right now, I kind of had to take a break from him, too. You know, and I took a break from everything and everyone. Because as I was saying, on August 11, my car got totaled, you know. And after that, you know, the stress of buying a new car... You know, I didn't have that much patience. And then at work, you know, like some of the youth are disrespectful, you know. And one of the youth tried to be disrespectful towards me. And, you know, I kind of stood up to my for myself. I didn't let him, you know, talk me down because he was trying to be disrespectful. And he's like, no, you don't talk to me like that. And he kept yelling at me and yelling at me. And, and I told management about it. And it's almost like they didn't care. They chose to let me go because I'm dealing with some emotions from a divorce instead of dealing with a, a, a bad attitude, bad behavior from, from my youth. That's not cool. They didn't even care about me. They too, they, they, anyway, I forgive them. I let it go. That was another thing, you know, two weeks ago, after everything that I'm going through, I ended up losing my job too because I stood up for myself and I didn't let a chauvinistic prick put me down. And maybe, I don't know. But I'm never going to let anyone put me down because God gave me a spirit of fearlessness, you know, where I don't let anyone put me down ever or step down on me. I guess that's what the problem is, too, you know, like I know when wrong is wrong and when I'm being mistreated and I'm not, you know, and God will remove me from a place where I'm not being respected, even though I'm not happy. I love my job. I did. You guys used to see how I used to be like, oh, I love my job. I will fight for my job. I love my job. But God allowed it to happen because at the end they didn't appreciate me. So I understand that too. So I'm not even going to worry or be sad about that. And I was getting sad about that. And, you know, and I was allowing all this depression and stuff to get to me. And, you know, and I was getting resentful. And I was like, why? Why me? Why did they let me go? Like, why? Why? You know, why? Why not? You know, why? Anyway, I was being all like. Like, you know, why, you know, I've, you know, I was doing everything good, you know, I was following all the policies, the procedures, you know, I was happy, you know, I was so happy. I was even looking into promotion, you know, I was, uh, maybe that's what it is, you know, like I was only supposed to be there for a little while. I realize now, you know, <laughs> you know, because my, my, actually my main job is life coaching. I want to teach people how to do things better within themselves, you know, and also I want to, you know, preach. Actually, no, I want to be a preacher. I don't care. You know, I just want to preach. I want to talk to, I want to pray for people. I want, you know, I, I just want to be a preacher, actually. Anyway, so that was another thing that made me sad because I really did like my job. And I liked everyone there. And I know they like me too because he even told me I'll give, you know, that he will give me a recommendation, whatever. They just couldn't renew my contract. And it's all because I didn't let someone talk me down, you know, and, and maybe I did yell or whatever, but, you know, anybody can have a little breakdown. And <laughs> anyway, I forgive them. But it still hurts because I do care for everyone over there. And I was actually doing a good job. I, I was. 
he even told me, he's like, oh, you have great ideas. You know, your ideas are great. You know, but unfortunately right now we just can't renew your contract. And to me that was like, what? They didn't even tell me why. But I know why. But what the enemy meant for evil, God will make it good. But I'm also staying away from, you know, doing live videos because sometimes I snap. And I know that those are things that I have to control within myself. So, and I'm working hard to get better like I'm out here walking even though you know I had a lot of trauma and I didn't recognize you know I had a lot of emotional trauma at work with the youth yelling at me he reminded me of when my ex-husband used to yell at me and that was like a lot of trauma like brought a lot of anxiety and you know it was like wow like I even took time off work for that and they didn't even take that into consideration that I had told them. I told them I disclosed. I disclosed that I was dealing with that, with anxiety, and they just didn't care. But it's okay because I was still trying my best to do a good, I did a good job, I know I did. Because everybody there loves me, you know. I know everybody there, you know. That's why I was like, that's weird. But I know God has something better. It just hurts, you know. That's the part that hurts always. When you stand up for God and or for the right thing. and I'm the one who always gets like, but God knows. That's why it's important to forgive and... And try to be positive. So I stay positive. But that's why I try not to do videos right now. Because, you know, because my heart is still a little sad about everything. You know, like I said, August 11th, my car got totaled. Then after that, you know, because I'm going through a divorce, you know, I, I was at home. And like two weeks ago, I was drinking and my dumb ass, excuse my language, did a video on Facebook live. You know, oh yeah, I was I was cleaning and a glove fell on the floor. You know, and it cut me like. You know, and well, the reason why it cut me is because I was I was <laughs> I was trying to deal with my emotions by drinking. You know, not only that, but I was in pain. You know, how I told you guys my car got totaled, so my body's in pain. I'm dealing with being yelled at work and disrespected, and not even care like. They don't even care about it, you know. Um, so I'm over here drinking in my apartment and. and I